Okay, uh, this third video is focused on rational expressions, but we're going to look at the type where you have to do factoring. So remember what a rational expression is. I put a little thought bubble down here. We are just talking about messy fractions, simplifying messy fractions, fractions that have variables in them, x and y in particular, um, and, and just messy stuff. So the type we're going to look at today are going to be fractions that look like this, our first example. Um, example one is going to be we have x squared plus 4x plus 3 all over x plus 3. Probably one of the most common mistakes people will make is they will think they could cross out the 3s or the x's. They'll pair them up. But you really can't do that. What you need to do is go inside of this problem and, and group things together. If there's an addition sign, x plus 3, this is a group. x plus 3 should be together. And, and x squared plus 4x plus 3 is another group. These do not match up. But I know that I can take this top piece and turn it into two parentheses using the rectangle diamond method. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to factor the top of this fraction, basically, so that I get, instead of this, two parentheses. And maybe they'll match up, I'm hoping. So I'm going to go down to the bottom here and show a little work on this. Now, this is old stuff. If you don't know how to do this, you need to go back and watch all the Chapter 8 videos on factoring. But uh, we're really quick in class at this. x squared and 3 go across from each other. Then you multiply them to get 3x squared for the top of the x. 4x goes in the bottom, and now you think of two things with x's, multiplying to 3 and adding to 4. So I'm going to do 3 times 1. 3 plus 1 is 4, 3 times 1 is 3, so I have a 3x and a 1x. Then I go around the outside edges, x times x is x squared, x times 3 is 3x, 3 times 1 is 3, and these are my parentheses. So that's what I'm going to put up here. I'm going to put x plus 3 and x plus 1. After doing all of that work, thankfully something turned out good for us here. Um, the x plus 3s match up perfectly. They're grouped together, but the groups match, so I can cross them out. And I am left with my answer. My answer that's left over is x plus 1 all by itself. And if you want to put a parenthesis around it, you can. Um, if you don't want to, you can leave it like this. It doesn't really matter. That x plus 1 is my answer. Either way, parenthesis or no parenthesis. So this is kind of a special case. Um, factoring is really when you run into this problem where you have adding or subtracting and you need to do the rectangle diamond method. So let's look at some examples. Let's do another one, maybe a little harder. Example 2. How about um, we have a multiplication problem? So two fractions being multiplied as our setup. And for our multiplication problem, we're going to have x squared plus 6x plus 8 over 10x times um, 5 over x plus 4. That's going to be my setup. So we know that when you're multiplying fractions, you go straight across. But we also know adding and subtracting needs to be grouped together. So we have x plus 4 is grouped together, and x squared plus 6x plus 8 is grouped together. And if I was to multiply this thing uh, straight across, it just turned into one big fraction with x squared plus 6x plus 8 times 5 over 10x times x plus 4. So not a lot I can simplify at the moment, but I know this thing on top, this thing, can be rectangle diamond. I can factor it. So I'm going to do a little bit of factoring. I'm going to go over here and make another rectangle diamond. And I'm going to factor this piece on the top. My plan is to do this. I'm going to find the answer and rewrite this as two parentheses. Remember it was x squared plus 6x plus 8 times 5. So I'm still going to have a times 5 but I'm going to change it into double parentheses. On the bottom, the only thing I can think of is change the 10 to 
to 2 times 5 x. 2 times 5 is 10. But x plus 4, I can't really do anything to. I can't pull anything out of x plus 4. So I'm going to leave it like this. So let's go solve this rectangle diamond stuff. Um, let's see, x squared and 8 are going to go in the corners. Multiply them, you get 8x squared. 6x is the middle piece. And find two things that multiply to 8 and add to 6. Let's see, 2 times 4 would be good. 2 times 4 is 8, and 2 plus 4 is 6. Okay. So put these in the corner, doesn't matter which corner, 2x and 4x, or you can go opposite of me if you want. Outside the edges, we have x times x is x squared, x times 2 is 2x, 2 times 4 is 8. So here are my answers, x plus 2 and x plus 4. So over here I write x plus 2 and x plus 4. Oops, x plus 4, kind of a bad plus sign. And then I'm ready to go. You can see where I've got my power of 1s. Uh, x plus 4 and x plus 4, they're going to cancel out. Get rid of those things. And the other thing that's going to cancel, you see the 5s? There's this 5 and this 5. They're going to cancel too. So what do we got left on top here? After we cancel everything out, we're going to be left with an x plus 2. And what do we got left on bottom? Well, I see a 2 and an x, so 2x. And you're done. You can't do anything else to this problem. You can't cancel the x's or the 2's because on top, it's still x plus 2 in a group. They're still grouped together, and they can only cross out if a group matches another group. So there's my answer. So this is simplifying uh, rational expressions with factoring using rectangle diamond. Good stuff to practice.